uh, a couple times I have been taking the city bike down the West side path and I will pass someone like holding up their chains, like yelling at me, like these are mint. <laughs> these are mint. it's it's insane, man. It's it's actually insane. It's so it feels so good and like very lucky to have like such a supportive community behind me. That uh, yeah, I mean like experiences like that is just top ten. All right, folks, we're back. Episode 43, and boy, do we got a screamer. The fashion icon, the TikTok star, the pre-workout magician, Marcus Maloney. How are you? I am well. How are you? I'm fantastic, man. I'm so happy. Uh, We have a mutual uh, friend, Tommy, uh, my head of social, and uh, he's a big fanboy of yours. And I am now a second fanboy of yours. Uh, Everything you do is just turns to gold, and I've just been such such a huge fan, so I'm really excited to have you on the pod. Well, uh, I certainly appreciate you having me on. It's it's actually funny, like, I feel how we got linked up, right? Because I had had Twitter, I guess, for just personal scrolling for so long, and I'd never really used it. And then I started, like, tweeting or reading tweets from people in kind of the direct-to-consumer space, and then saw you guys, and then started, like, to interact a little bit, and it's just kind of, like, grown into this this whole thing now. <laughs> oh, the bird app. The bromance is strong. Um, yeah. I am in Austin, Texas, as always, at Marketing HQ. Where does this podcast find you today, Marcus? I am here in Manhattan, New York, where I live uh, and run the business out of my apartment. How cool. How cool. <laughs> How long have you been in New York? Uh, moved up here around October of 2017. Um, okay. And been here ever since. Yeah. Where'd you move from? I was born in uh, Pennsylvania, and then very early on, we moved to Virginia um, yeah. because of my dad's work, and have been in Virginia ever since. Went to school in Philadelphia, though, so kind of like okay. right outside Philly. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I'm a Midwest boy, born and bred myself, where I was uh, Arizona-born, but uh, pretty much grew up in the in- Indiana. Um, okay. So you're super well known for a few things. One, I kind of want to touch on your fashion stuff, which is really cool. But two, you have a pretty amazing kind of, so I'm rocking it now, little minted gear, but you have kind of a two prong approach here. And one's kind of really interesting, but how did you tell us for the people that don't know a little bit about minted and then how you got into it? So, man, it's tough, right? Uh, I was, it was, this was around the beginning of the pandemic, right? Yep. Um, my brother and I, we had heard the, we had both, we were both working like corporate jobs at the time. And we had been sent home, uh, both of us actually, the the day before, because people were getting sick and people didn't really know what was going on. So we were like, all right, let's just take a long weekend at my parents' house in Virginia and ended up like, so I packed for three days, ended up staying for a year. And um, it was at one point, it was me, my brother, my sister, everybody home working around the dining room table. Like all of us had our multiple monitors, like set up everything. And uh, I was kind of going stir crazy a little bit um, because I had no creative outlet, really. Um, So I started to just create content on on social media, um, mainly TikTok, and like didn't really know what I was doing. I mean, half my videos, I I was I would go to uh, I would go do these 30 minute walks at lunch, like just to, you know, keep my body moving. And I would just talk to the camera, essentially. <laughs> like, I, I had really no idea, like, what kind of content I wanted to make or what, the, like, if there was a theme or, and then, like, slowly kind of started talking about things I was passionate about. It started in kind of, like, fitness and then moved into fashion, right? And at the time, I had always worn 18-inch chains around my neck. And yep. these I had made in the Diamond District in uh, New York City for me yep. specifically because I couldn't find this length um for men right generally 18 inches is sold as a women's chain but the the women's chains are super fine and i thought they would break so i went so i went a little bit thicker and people kept asking about the chains on on in my tiktok comments and i'm like i've always kind of had this like entrepreneurial spirit whatever i was like i wonder if i could spin up a shopify store and just kind of make a i was like i'll make I'll make 15 sets and then we'll see what happens. 
And one thing leads to the next. Uh, now I'm doing it full time. But um, yeah, I mean, mainly just just uh, on social media specifically started around me talking about stuff I'm passionate about. I love uh, fitness. I love fashion for me specifically. Uh, fashion kind of serves as both a creative outlet and just a, a way to for to explore different time periods, honestly, and, and kind of see how I can bring those time periods maybe back a bit modern. Yeah. yeah, you're a '70s guy. You, the '70s look does yeah. really well on you. It's, uh, you're a big guy too. You're a unit. I was checking. You're like what six three or something like that, right? I am pushing six three. Uh, yeah, I sit yeah. around like 190 pounds most yeah. of most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, because you were a bit of a lacrosse star too, right? Uh, I don't know if star is the right word, but I did play, um, <laughs> I played in college. Uh, yeah, I played at a school called St. Joe's. They actually yeah. just had their first, uh, NCAA attorney bid, um, last, last weekend. And, uh, it was, I mean, it was grueling. Like, I'm not even going to lie to sport. anybody. Like you are not only working in school full time, but you are, you know, most of the time around three to four hours a day of either gym, like weight room and practice. Right. And it's very much uh, a mental battle as much as it is a physical battle. And like, I think kind of where it benefits me is just um, being able to stick to almost a long-term vision and like not being caught up with like, Oh, I don't see success kind of right away, you know, yeah. just kind of like grind it out every single day. Yeah, there's a certain weirdness of delayed gratification. I, I was also an athlete in, uh, at uni for a couple of years. And man, I don't, I don't know if I'd really recommend it unless you, one, love the sport or two, actually legitimately like have a chance to go pro. Because it was, to your point, dude, it's so hard. We, I ran. And so we would do oh. morning runs, middle of the day we'd work out, and then evening practices. And like during hard training sessions, dude, you're just wrecked. And now you're supposed to expect you to go study or go to class and like, all you want to do is sleep. And, um, yeah, it's a big, it's a big commitment and challenge. And I mean, lacrosse is kind of same. It's, it's essentially like hockey, but run without skates where you're just super physical, super cardio, um, a lot of kind of just knickknack kind of hurts where you just tape it up, rub some dirt on it kind of stuff where it's a, it's a super intense sport. Yeah. I mean, like, like you said, you kind of just become okay with this perpetual state of my body's a bit broken down, but we're going to push it and see what happens. Right. And, you know, like at the time it's, it's not that enjoyable. Right. But, yeah. but it's now like, tr like a trans kind of current transition to just distance running now and kind of trying to push that as hard as I can. And just like the days where the mileage uh, starts to build up and I can lean it's it's I'm doing it with my brother who also played in my same division in college. So we played yeah. against each other, but both of us being used to just being worn pretty much since, you know, high school, just training yeah. like this, it, uh, it benefits us now, but I'll tell you what, I, there were days, man, where all I wanted to do was sleep. I remember going home on, uh, on holidays to my parents' house and I, I would take four or five naps a day. I, I was just yeah. so spent and you don't yep. realize it. Yep. <laughs> Especially too, like to your point, once you take the stimulus out and you can sleep, dude, you're, that's all you're doing is sleeping. Now I'm with you. We would, uh, and we, we kind of indulged in a little bit of, uh, you know, good times as well. So we would go, we had on our Sundays, uh, this feels like so old man on my lawn kind of stuff, but it's fun. Uh, on Sundays was our long run. So for people that don't know in like division one, you can practice, you can't practice seven days a week, but your week or your day off doesn't have to be a specific day. And so our coach made it off on uh, our day I was off were on Monday. So people wouldn't go out and party on Saturday. Um, and so our long runs were on Sunday. And I mean, me and the other guy, we we're actually pretty good. Um, we would just go get blasted, dude. And then we'd go park in the morning because the runs would be at like six or six 30. We'd just go park in the morning and they would knock on our windows, like our teammates. And we'd get up and just crank off 13 miles. It's like youth and kind of to your point, like just the, the mental fortitude that we had, that, that we had back then was just uh insurmountable and so I, there, there's definitely a lot of takeaways from that is that what you missed and that's why you got into marathoning because that's a that's uh, also another it's pretty brutal distance running can be i can speak from experience it can really wear you down especially for a big guy man it's a it's a lot yes. of pounding so you know it's funny my brother and i both 
uh, swore off ever running more than about a mile or two after we graduated. And um, for me, I miss the competitive side of it. Mm -hmm. And the thing I like about uh, distance running, especially like, you know, there, there are people that distance run and they just do it for enjoyment and they race or they, you know, they do the races for the atmosphere and stuff like that. And that's, you know, great. Right. But I take it as a challenge to myself, like how far can we push it? And I was never, we had this, um, when I was in school, we had this two mile conditioning test mm -hmm. where, uh, we had to run two miles in under 12 minutes. And looking back at it now, I'm like, it's embarrassing that I could never do it. But um, I remember just being so miserable running. So I have this weird, uh, like, a draw to things that are extremely difficult. And so yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm going to sign up for a half marathon. I want to run in under an hour 30. Yeah. And so my my I put in, like, put in my first block of training ever, like, probably two and a half, three years ago now. Okay. Ran, like, a 137. Um, but I, then I was like, kind of hooked. I was like, this is all right. I, but now I know what's going to happen because like, only, it's only going to get more and more intense. Like training's only like, I, I, I ran that on, I think 25 miles a week. Yeah, yeah. So then like, there was a period there where I was only really running like two miles to warm up before the gym. And then, uh, my brother and I are, are looking at each other. We're like, let's sign up for the New York city half. Or we, we signed up for a San Diego half. And so we did a weird training block. It wasn't, it wasn't like a, it wasn't following a schedule, um, yeah. but we were trying to do one long run a week, some shorter runs, whatever. We go out to San Diego. I'm like, oh, I have to run a sub 130 now. I'd been tr tr like documenting the training on TikTok stuff. Get there. The last two miles of this course were uphill and yeah. I'm training in Manhattan. So I don't have a whole lot of hill experience and I get humbled, right? Yeah. Like these, they blew my quads up. Like yeah. so bad. I ran a 131. Thought I was gonna black out. And um and so my brother didn't run a 130 either. And then we got back and we were we were we were hooked. And we were like, all right, we're signing up to the New York City half. So but I look at it and I'm like, now it's we gotta go, let's find the hardest training plan we can we can do. So yeah. we found one that was 70 miles a week. And I was like, I think we'll probably get overuse injury doing that. Yeah, that's so lot. we did one that was, uh, we peaked at 56 miles a week. So we start yeah. really hammering and the growth that I saw, um, when I started that plan to when I ran the half, I finished it, I think like 122. Let's go kids. But like the, the growth in speed and just like overall aerobic endurance was insane. Like toward the end, I tested my VO2 max and was like right around 71. And I was like, all right, well, now we got something here. So we ran that. Now what's next? So it's like, all right, yeah, I guess we're doing a marathon. And I know this, like we're now we're base building, but I know this training block is going to be terrible. We're doing 70 yeah. a week and yeah. it's just... Yeah, it's like it's almost uh, it's an addiction to see like how uncomfortable I'm, I can make myself. Yes. I think. Yeah. yeah, I love that. For people that don't know, a marathon is twenty six point two miles, and a half is thirteen point one. So it's pretty brutal. It's uh, I, I, I'll, I'll f around and jump into a five k or a ten k every now and then, but that's pretty. You can pretty much do that with, especially too, once you've been there mentally. It's all mm. it's all mental, but halves and holes are not mental though <laughs> you will bump. Yeah. like you you need to have the training that's incredible man that's how do you you're so yoked though how do you keep the weight on ah uh, man i eat, eat a ton? Uh, so i mean listen uh starting like 2017 is when i really started to dial in my diet um me my brother and my best friend tyler cliggett like we we did our first ever like cut in the summer. Mm -hmm. And so we really started to understand macro micronutrients, you know, uh, how it's like playing into our physiques and everything. Yep. And so since then it's been like weighing out food pretty much, you know, all the time since now I, I can look at food and understand, you know, no, what are. the proportion is and how much it'll weigh about, but it's just super regimented dieting. Um, but, I think people kind of conflate that and they hear dieting as like a negative for yeah. me that my body has become so used to it that if I, I do end up like 
just going completely off track and eating a bunch of junk food, like I run the risk of having crazy stomach problems mid run. Yeah. And then like yeah. I, you ran, you do not want that. So uh-huh. it, it becomes more of a performance thing. So it's just keeping protein intake super high to try to avoid muscle wasting and making sure you're eating back your calories that you're burning. I love that, man. That's incredible. <laughs> um, Switching gears a little bit, and I promise people we'll get to the e-commerce, all the fun stuff, but um, <laughs> have you always been so fashionable or was that something that uh, just took off? Not really. Um, I'd say it probably came to be uh, around the time I moved to New York City, right? Okay. Um, the culture just and off this isn't me. like this isn't like a knock on my parents or anything, but uh, it, it always felt uh kind of hard to experiment with different types of um outfits or fashion when yeah. i was at home also yeah. too like just having more disposable income to mess around fair with, play. like uh, fair play. Yeah, yeah on that it makes it a little bit easier right um and so once i got here i was kind of immersed in you know manhattan and just yeah. the culture around where i was living and i think the beauty of it is how many different cultures are like just in a melting pot here. It's amazing. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so you're pulling inspiration from, from everything around you, you know, you just like going to walk to the grocery store, you see a bunch of different stuff. And you're like, well, I could try something like that, see how it fits. And at the, at the end of the day, like, I think everybody probably goes through a phase where they are on the Instagram explore page and they start trying out, you know, a bunch of stuff they see people wearing. Yeah. And that's fine. Like, that's fine. You know, there is no knocking that because people have to find their style, but I think people will make a huge stride in personal style when they start to understand how a garment actually lays on your specific body. Right. Because some people, like I, I talk about this a lot and I talked about this in one of my, my biggest videos on the platform is like, there, there is the whole Saint Laurent aesthetic, right? And yeah. for people that don't know the Saint Laurent aesthetic, it's very much like rocker, guy, skinny, tight, everything fits like that. Yeah. I can't ever wear that because my thighs are way too big, right? Yeah. But if I was just trying to fit a trend or an aesthetic, I would try to fit into those pieces and it would the proportions would look terrible, right? So generally because of legs specifically, I have to wear uh, you know, a wider cut or something yeah. with like pleats just to make the to round off the overall look of of garments. And um yeah, once I started to play with proportion is when I feel like I made huge strides and just learning how to dress myself better instead of just, you know, seeing things and trying it because you saw somebody do it. Dude, that just blew my mind. Yeah. You had a, a pretty <laughs> fancy spread in a GQ, right? You had a, uh, a yeah. whole, whole thing in there. It's pretty cool. You know, it's, I mean, it's interesting. I didn't know about it until uh, one of the people commented on one of my videos that it was there. No way. So I went, yeah, I went looking for it and then <laughs> um, didn't even know it existed. Saw it. And then, uh, actually like looked up the writer and uh i sent him a dm on instagram i was like oh i like i appreciate you know you featuring me here and uh you know he wrote some some nice words back but yeah i was i mean totally random i had no idea it was coming amazing amazing okay let's wrap up the main segment um what's the nicest thing someone's ever done for you oh man um i think that it would have to be the, I, I am always appreciative of how my parents raised me. Like yeah. they, the way that they encouraged me to always just chase, you know, if it's something that like set your heart on fire or you felt passionate about, do it. You know, they tried to introduce me to a lot of things in the arts, specifically when I was younger, you know, like piano, stuff like that. And like at the time, it just, it, I, I don't think I was in the right frame of mind to learn it. But they were always willing to support me in that way if I wanted to to chase after it and, you know, give me resources to try and be good at it. And uh, I'll be forever grateful for that. I always talk to them about, like, how can I, you know, hopefully I have kids one day. How can I try to replicate that in yeah. the best way possible? Because it was, I think, a huge, you know, uh, confidence boost for me. Shout out, mom and dad. Fantastic. Shout Fantastic. out, mom Come and on. dad. Um, all right, folks, time for the value add segment. This is the reason you bought the ticket. 
Okay, give people kind of a, a skinny on minted because you have a two prong approach with minted, right? Because you have your health supplements, your pre workout, and then you have your apparel business. But the apparel business is also off a of drop, which you're seeing here. He was kind enough to give me some of the goodness. Um, but give people that don't know kind of the skinny on that and just so the elevator pitch behind Bull. So there is minted New York. Um, and that is all things apparel as well as precious metal jewelry. So we do deal in uh, sterling silver oh, you're still and 14 doing the changes karat though. gold. Oh, oh cool. yeah. Yeah. Oh, big, awesome. big part of business. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's tough just because I, I feel like I try to talk about all the new stuff we're doing, but yeah, we still, you know, deal in everything, you know, from jewelry to apparel. And then there's uh, minted athletics, which is like a subs is what you're wearing right now as a subset of minted New York. Um, and then to tie into that, it's uh, Minted Health, which is sports nutritional supplements. Right now, only have you know two flavors of pre-workout, just because yeah. product formulation and getting that right takes a lot, a long time. Plus, it's capital intensive. And yeah. um, I think for me, you know, I'm extremely lucky to be working in these two fields because it's both things I'm passionate about. Right. So when it comes to either putting in like really long hours or to, uh, you know, have to work on the weekends or just like all, all the time, it's, it's something I'd be doing anyway. I'm just lucky enough to be doing it full time, you know? Yeah. I love that, man. What, uh, why the drop model for the apparel biz? Is it just easier to uh, like, like the scarcity, like, this stuff's amazing. Like for people that don't know, the, the hoodies are just absolutely first rate. This running shirt is one of my favorites. Um, the cuts are amazing. The fabrics are amazing. The 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 colors you have are so cool. Like I want one of those. You gave me the navy and you gave <laughs> me the, the green is my favorite, to be fair. The green is gorgeous. But um, is it just, again, like a capital thing or is it more of like a supreme model or like why the drop model? So... Uh... As I, I mentioned a little earlier, we started with just those those packs of jewelry, right? Yep. And um, so it's been a product of both me having to bootstrap and not having a ton of working capital. Yep. And uh, also, like, probably best problem to have, I can't keep things stocked, right? Yeah. So, um, like, it's not a drop model by design. This is just how it's worked out. Um, yeah. it, we've just grown from like packs of chains, roll all cash into next, you know, set of products and just like continue to roll this ball. And like the, pro the releases have gotten bigger and bigger, and bigger, just because our, our pool of working capital has increased over time. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, the, 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 the best problem and, but it is still a problem is we can't keep stuff stocked. I have talked in the past how I would like to have, uh, some stuff, you know, stocked, 24 seven, like year round, just, yeah, yeah. you know, more, maybe more of like a, a line of uh, basics, stuff like that. But also, you know, there's, there's that type of apparel and there's also, you know, the higher end stuff that we're making here in New York city by hand. So planning like a fashion show, all of that stuff, all of it, just, it's a time intensive. <laughs> it's time Amazing. intensive. Did you, so one of the other things, and I, I promise this won't be all grab assing, but um, the other thing that you did so well, like the box and the unboxing and like, was that experience top of mind for you? Or were you just like, Hey, throw it to a designer and it just came out amazing. Cause the box is incredible. The unboxing experience is incredible. Like everything feels very well thought out when I got that package. Is that obviously that's by design, right? W what were you thinking when you were, uh, like creating this experience for people? Cause it's amazing. So, um, you know, to this day, majority of that stuff runs through me. Um, we have uh, on the design side, I do, I have a graphics designer I work uh, with, but nothing on the packaging end. And we also have, um, he is a student, but he works for us, you know, all, all the time. His name's sure. Clay, legendary designer of garments and accessories. I encourage people to check him out. He's crazy talented. But uh, yeah, so I, I have uh, become obsessed with, the way Steve Jobs looked at packaging, yeah. right? Like I'm sure if you're an Apple person, you most likely have one of their boxes laying around because you feel a visceral reaction to not throw it out, right? And it's like, why is that, right? Um, and so 
there is a whole entire experience around opening an item that you are anticipating, right? I remember reading about the way Steve Jobs described those Apple boxes and like that air pocket is by design, yeah. right? To slow you down and build anticipation. And so I try to, you know, look at people that have had success like that and see like, what was the mental behind this? And, um, and right now um, we we just got a sample back of a, a pair of sunglasses and uh, I'm starting to formulate the idea around the packaging there. And it's like how I always want there to be, you know, customer experience and customer satisfaction is the, the really the only thing that matters to me. Right. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, if I can provide higher quality packaging, it's going to make that experience better. I have to do it, even if it cuts into margin. Like that's almost your obligation as a business owner is to make sure your customer is satisfied because they took their time, traded it for money, and then ultimately chose to spend that money on your product. And you now owe them a good experience. I think personally, that's kind of like my my mantra there. So um, packaging, I just I just try to to make it you know good enough and constantly improving right like i said we I mean, we're constantly under working capital constraint because i just am always rolling cash but um you know that's just a product of being you know taking having taken no outside funding and just trying to kind of be as scrappy as possible i love that man i love that kind of mantra of it's almost your obligation to provide that best in class experience especially kind of when you're in that, you know, luxury tier, if you will, where this, this stuff isn't cheap, nor is it, um, you know, lower quality. It is in that kind of value for value, higher level um, type of quality. So I love that you have that mentality because it is, it was where I, you, speaking of thrown away, I still, I hate like trash and stuff, or, or not trash, that's a pejorative, but like stuff around. And I still have the box here over in the corner because I can't bring myself to like, can't throw it out yet i'm like well maybe i'll just keep it or i'll just i'll figure something out for it very much so in the apple um vein so you absolutely succeeded there that's amazing that's great um, to hear what are the best parts and hardest parts of running minted um you know i think probably the hardest thing is the is the working capital constraint yeah. um almost because i i there are days I wrestle with it because I think, you know, we could be growing faster. And then at the same time, like it could be growing faster. We took outside capital and at the same time, you know, growing at your pace is not a bad thing. And also, you know, I'm in full control right now. Yes. Right. So um, I, I am calling the shots and I've steered the ship to where we're at you know, good enough so far yep. that um, I think just I need to keep going this way and maybe, you know, growing slower than I, I could be uh, just because we're still very much, um, you know, it's just me, my brother and Clay, right? So we're, we're very much just hands on with all of our customers. I never and I never want that to um kind of go away at all yeah. you know i'm still yeah. emailing emailing customers myself just because you know, you know things happen and i got to make them right you know yeah absolutely and what's the best parts uh man i i don't even know where to begin right i am 27 i'm working with my brother full time like here in new york city extremely blessed to be in this situation um i i I get emails from customers about, you know, how much they like the product. And it's like to create a tangible product like that in, in a different way than, you know, maybe like a software or something like something that people are wearing or yes. I'll get DMS of people taking pictures of random people in my stuff, like around the world. And it just, it's such a crazy feeling that I don't even really know how to describe it. it just, it's, it's a huge blessing, you know? Yeah, I was going to say there is something. So I think uh, I think of businesses in two ways, right? Like bits and atoms and bits are just mm. better because of margins and the economics are just fantastic. You don't have marginal costs, things like that. But there's something like the payoff in atoms is so interesting, especially when you're in something like apparel or something where it's like, not only did I make it and design that, that human gave me money. And not only did they give me money, like 
they're proud to put this thing on and like peacock in it is that that has to be top 10 fillings of just like this is sensational like it's fantastic like we, when i see people with triple well screenshots and stuff that makes me smile or like oh we're making more money because we're using triple that's fantastic but and we do have some merch coming so possibly i will get that that feeling soon mm. of uh, yeah. seeing people repping the the uh, triple well but yeah there has to be something really really deep and visceral to that uh just hits you really home where it's like especially because it, it's intimate like you're literally wearing it on your body like it, it, it's as intimate as it gets even more so than like a cell phone or something where it's hidden most of the time it's like um same with the jewelry right like the jewelry and the apparel but the jewelry is going to be harder a little bit to suss out that that's minted sometimes where it's like man you know that that's the minted dye or like the way you guys have your colorways are so so unique that um, yeah, I can definitely vibe with that. I love it. it. It's funny you say that about the jewelry because uh, a couple times I have been taking the city bike down the west side path and I will pass someone like holding up their chains, like yelling at me like these are, min- <laughs> <laughs> these are min- it's, it's insane, man. It's, oh, it's actually that. insane. It's so it feels so good and like very lucky to have like such a supportive community behind me that uh yeah i mean like experiences like that it's just top 10 i love it um do you so like how do you see the expansion going and then do you see any like collabs in the future like if you could do a collab with somebody who would it be either brand or person? uh so i have uh, on the collabs front i am speaking with a few i don't know how much i'm allowed to, to okay, say yeah. no breaking um, news yet yeah, yeah, can't uh, upset anybody, but yeah, uh, it's it's tough because there there is some stuff in the works. Uh, yep. I just um, I don't want to I don't want to spoil oh, yeah. anything yet. But it yeah, it, it would it. it would be I guess if you think about it, it would be very much uh, up our alley on the running side of things yep. uh, and the athletic wear side of things. And uh, ex- as far as expanding goes, I will most likely host a pop up in New York City um, this sick. summer. Um, like the only thing holding us back right now is our inability to keep inventory on hand. Um, so I'm trying to set some aside so we could host a proper pop-up and, uh, and then just, you know, keep expanding product lines. We have, um, we have a couple different manufacturers that we work with. One of them being on like a huge scale that like if I could, I don't want to name brands they yeah. do work with, but yeah, yeah. they're, they're working with like the, the big players. And, you know, I think I kind of had to weasel my way in because when I first started that conversation, they looked at our website and it was locked and they said, I don't think, <laughs> I, I, I don't think you're the right size. And I pretty much had to like beg and plead and tell them like, I, I can hit your minimums. Like I promise, yeah. just give me a shot here. And we have some, they have crazy capabilities as far as like technical fabrics and stuff. So we're really, we're really pushing on a lot of um, the athletic wear as well and a ton of other, a ton of other stuff. And then into the high, high fashion space, we will, we'll put on a fashion show here probably within the next 12 months. I'm thinking probably end of winter in New York city. So that'll be a full collection um, of garments. Myself and uh, Clay are working on that right now. Are you going to uh, be one of the models or no? No, no, no. no you Listen, I, I just, I just want to, I just want to be behind the scenes. I will, uh, I'll, I'll hire models from agencies and let them do their thing. Um, okay. Fair you enough. know, I, I, I prefer to be in the background just working, you know, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's not, it would be cool, I guess, but uh, yeah, not, I don't, I'm not going to walk. I'm not going to walk. Too meta, too meta. I get it. I get it. Too meta, too meta. <laughs> Maybe I'll live stream it on like TikTok Live or something. Now. Oh, that would be great idea. Actually, great idea. Boom. Yeah. Um, what was the genesis for the pre workout? Because that's kind of a big jump from. I mean, obviously not a huge jump because you're such a fitness buff, but ultimately you have this huge play in fashion, all this, and then now you're moving into uh, consumables, that being supplements. What was the What was the thinking there? So uh, the original thesis that I had was that there are a lot of pre-workouts with proprietary blends, right? And you have no peek behind the curtain there on what is in that proprietary blend, right? So it's, it becomes kind of difficult to know like, well, what am I dosed at for what's in this blend? And is it even like effective? Um, And so 
I just started hammering out research of like peer reviewed articles, seeing what are the most studied ingredients that are going to have some, you know, performance benefit uh, as far as like, you know, specifically vasodilation and per, increasing and promoting blood flow as well as yeah. energy. And, um, you know, I, we landed on like seven ingredients, one of them being caffeine, obviously, you know, ultra researched. Um, and then I just wanted everything to be dosed toward the higher end of the effective range. Love it. And that's it. Make it taste, then just, you know, make it taste good and you have your product. Because I think that there was like a, I, I always will run like a litmus test of on myself because I, I think that I'm a very informed buyer of things. Love and that. so I was, I was essentially looking for a product that I couldn't find and figured I would make it myself. Kind of yep. same happened with the jewelry as well as yep. you know, different pieces of apparel. And then, uh, yeah, just started that formulation process, learned, had to learn a ton about manufacturing, you know, not only consumable supplements, but, you know, s- s- this is now you're running a business where people are ingesting your, yeah. your product. So yeah. you have to you know, do everything, you know, button everything up, make sure your, your bases are covered and you're using high quality ingredients, stuff like that. So there's a lot of learning, but you know, I think that's probably my favorite part about this whole entire thing of, of running both of these businesses is that like every single day I have a million new things I have to learn. Yeah. And I, the, I don't really, I wouldn't say I was a good student at all. And I, I don't learn in that way of a typical classroom. Like I have yeah. to just be out doing it. So this is kind of that. plays into my strong suit, I would say. That's fantastic. Um, what's your favorite, favorite, favorite flavor profile? Cause you have two, right? I have two. And, um, recently actually, uh, somebody in our discord community said, if you mix both of them, they're really good. And I have never tried, <laughs> but, um, the suicide. right now I've just been kicking the, uh, I've been kicking the peach or the, the pink lemonade just cause it's new. Yeah. And I've been taking the peach tea for a long time beforehand. Um, so yeah, just the pink lemonade cause it's new. Uh, everybody in my family takes it. So, um, my, I know my mom loves the peach tea and, uh, you know, my dad, he just is a caffeine fiend. So whatever you put in front of him, he's taking it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I like them both. I think the pink lemonade is a little stronger, but I'll, I'll send yeah, uh, okay. I'll send both bottles over and you can be the deciding factor. Oh, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do a blind taste test. Um, <laughs> the And these are available now though, right? These are not drop models. Yeah. These are on your site. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yep. All the time. I love it. Um, kind of a little bit of a, a veer off question, but... How do you see e-commerce unfolding in the next two to three years, not only for minted, but in the macro? So it's tough, right? Because I think the buyer is becoming more and more informed, right? Mm -hmm. And I had put out a piece about the kind of the macroeconomic landscape of not just e-commerce, but just in general. And the, the, you know, you have inflation that you're you're keeping an eye on you have the overall unsteady global markets just yeah. you know you have the the war in ukraine Absolutely. and you have you know stock market uncertainty uh and so not only is the consumer becoming smarter and more diligent in what they're doing before they buy but also they're they're going to potentially feel a squeeze on their pockets and where they want yeah. to deploy their um excess capital so you have to almost have some form of value add. And I think for brands specifically, you you are doing yourself a disservice if you don't really have um, much of a connection with your customer. You know, I like to sometimes go in and read uh, brands maybe that are larger than us or kind of in a parallel space uh, that are on Trustpilot and just kind of like peruse through and see, you know, how they're taking care of their customers because, if you are not harboring a good relationship with your customer, and uh, I think you'll probably feel pain in in the long run, right? Yep. Like your customer is always correct. No matter how wrong they actually may be, they're always right. And you need to respect that. You also need to respect that they're spending their money at your store. So take care of them because they deserve it. 
I love that. I think that's a huge, and I, a little bit of a corollary for me is I think community is going to be bigger than ever. Um, and that's, mm. I think community or uh, connection can be a really uh, big function of community. And so I, I love where you're headed with that. I also think too, uh, you're going down the other path as well is um, as like the COVID is starting to kind of fade away or just kind of becoming no normal place. I think there's going to be a, uh, uh, a really big thirst for in-person things again. So I love that, like the pop-up you're going to do, the fashion events. And again, that's also another really great way to facilitate connection where I'm a big believer in somebody has to like you, know you, trust you before they transact with you. And there's no other way to do that, do all three of those things at once than in person. It doesn't scale like on the internet where you can get somebody like you, somebody can trust you, and somebody can know you at different arenas with different pieces of content, so on and so forth. And that scales pretty much infinitely. But in person, you can do all three of those at once. And uh, it's it's really cool. So I, I love where your head's at. And I think you're spot on too with the, the macro analysis as well. There's going to be some, some pretty big... Um, headwinds that we're facing right now. And so um, there, there probably will be a constraint. But I think to your point as well, um, people are just going to be, I don't know how much it's going to shrink as much as people are just going to be more judicious in where they spend it. Yeah, you know, I, I, I also get a lot of DMs about people who are either starting businesses. I mean, it might be in the apparel space, it, it might just be software. But I, I always try to tell them like, there seems to be uh, kind of like a mindset where you almost feel bad that you're not as big as the big guys, right? Yep. You look at brands like Nike who have these huge brand moats. And to me, like you have to almost take that as a blessing, right? You're as a startup, much more nimble than Nike is, yep. right? 100%. Nike is also, or, and I, I don't mean to use Nike. I just talking big brands in general, but yeah, yeah, big, yeah. big brands like that, have a lot of hoops to jump through to get 100%. things either approved or a product to market or even a piece of content made. And you need to use your scrappiness to your advantage and use your nimbleness and ability to adapt and pivot fast to your advantage. I also think like that ties right into just running lean. Like you should run your business almost as lean as physically possible because yeah. of chances of you know times like this where there is potential headwind keep keep operations lean don't have excess spending on stupid stuff and just make it all about products you know how much value can you actually add to your customer's life brilliant brilliant absolutely brilliant oh, one of my favorite segments all right man are you ready strap in put your uh, lacrosse helmet on we're going into rapid fire <laughs> all right okay uh marathons overrated underrated underrated Ooh, I do i it. do i have to give explanations you, you, I'm a witness in your world. You can pontificate if you want, or you can just plow right through. It's totally up to you. The thing, the thing, uh, I'll, I'll pontificate for a sec, even though I, I, I hate feeling it. preachy. But like the thing I like <laughs> about distance running is like we live in a day and age where you can get instant gratification the second you open your phone, right? Yes. But let's yes. say you set yourself up uh, with a goal to run a certain time on a, on a distance event, like a half marathon, or or in your case, a marathon. There is no shortcut to that time, right? Yeah. So it's you and the clock and a whole host of days where you don't wanna do what you wanna do, right? You don't wanna get up, it's pouring rain, the wind is shit, it's a headwind, and now you gotta run 13 miles. Nobody wants to do that, right? But there's like a lesson to be had in showing up like that day after day after day, working towards something you may not get until a couple years down the road. And that's, I'm getting off my soapbox there. No, I love that. And I'm, I'm all pumped up now. I think that that's something that is, uh, it's, it's been lost a bit. And there, it, there, there's also some, we won't go too down the rabbit hole, but there's some, some digital hijacking there that people get these, these weird, almost like masturbatory kind of, I don't even know if that's a word, but like, it, it, it's like a fake representation of what you would actually feel, but it's not the real thing. And so like, you're like, oh yeah, I played a video game and I accomplished this where it's like, there's a certain aspect of, uh, to your point, like paradoxically, like the harder you worked at it, the more gratifying it was. And so without that mm. work, the accomplishment doesn't come. And so the, it, the accomplishment is a function of the work you put into it. And so uh, I, I couldn't endorse that anymore. I think it's absolutely spot on. Mm. Um, lacrosse, overrated, underrated. 
you know, I went into it and and loved the sport, right? But in college, it very much became a job. And yep. I, I don't, I can't say overrated or underrated, right? It's very much, you know, everybody's own personal opinion. But there, you know, it, it can change for a person. And it, it, when it, once it became a job for me, I I had a bit of a falling falling out of my love for for the sport, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is, you know literally the exact same uh, pathway for running with me uh pre-workout overrated underrated underrated baby let's go Dude, I, some, this, these pumps hit different i'm telling you what yeah. there's yeah. nothing like a really good pump in the gym it's yeah euphoric agree have you seen pumping iron the classic arnold flick? i have of course, oh, of course. Yes. yeah phenomenal <laughs> um fashion overrated or underrated underrated oh man it could be both honestly underrated in the sense that like there there is something to be said for having garments that fit you correctly and that. kind of maybe the confidence that it might bring you o- overrated in the people that get super upset when somebody doesn't share their same viewpoint on fashion Ooh. that that's kind of got to go you know i mean it's, it's fashion is is an inherently subjective topic right so there's gonna be people that don't agree that you know maybe you're your favorite designer is, uh, you know, X and mine is Y and we, uh, two completely different fashion classes. Right. And, or, or fashion, like, um, you know, trains Genres of thought. Or what have you, and yeah. yeah, there's, there's no reason to get upset about that. You know, we're all in the same game. Impeccably put New York overrated, underrated. Underrated. Oh, I've never yeah. felt energy. Like I felt in New York city, man. I, I tell Especially you what, Manhattan. I, the thing, yeah, I mean the, the the thing about New York is if if you're if you're like an inherently super competitive or you know driven person, there is always going to be either somebody doing more than you or like you need to keep pushing if you want to continue to grow in that way. And then that's that that's energy I love. You know, it does the city does not sleep. You either show up or you know it'll switch you out. Yep, that's so well put. Shopify, overrated, or underrated? Um, I think, you know, I don't, I don't really know. It's the only platform for e-com that I've used uh, as far yeah. as like selling goes. Yeah. So maybe probably underrated in the way that I don't want to even use it to its full potential. <laughs> I feel yeah, like, yeah. like, uh, I, like I've always heard about a headless commerce, all this yeah. stuff. Like, dude, our, our website is a free theme. Like yeah. I, I always see these things on Twitter, like people like, you know, making crazy an- analysis of like whatever uh, my, my idea is let's just remove as much f- friction as possible to get a product purchased and all the other jazz. is like, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. I think that's about the, in terms of like hierarchies, I think you have it right where it's like ex- remove friction, make sure the experience is there make sure the product is amazing and make sure the customer success experience is there where if there is, you know, something where you're supposed to zig and they zag that you can make it right. Cause I think that yeah. again, can be really smart people saying really smart things that don't really matter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it can also get lost. Like if you're not an operator and um, you're kind of, I don't know what you would be if you're not an operator, but you're, you're operating in the space and you think things should be done a certain way. Like, you know, operator and somebody looking in probably see it much differently. Yeah. Very much so like man in the arena, it's so much easier to give mm-hmm. criticism than it is to actually do the thing. NFTs overrated or underrated? Oh, man, I don't, I don't know enough about the space to be honest with you. Oh, you never I got into own, them? I don't own None any. Of it. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, you know, I had people from my community consistently asking me to release a Mint to New York NFT. And I had almost like this gut feeling of, I'm sure there are projects with inherent value, but it felt very much cash grabby. And uh, yes. that's not what I'm about, right? So for me, overrated. Super I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure people will kind of be pissed about that. <laughs> It could be cool though. You could release an NFT with something and then that could like materialize into like a ticket to the fashion show or something or the pop-up or a new, like tying See, it back to a community or something I like. But for me, we had the same feeling about if people are buying it to speculate and make money off of it, like a triple whale NFT, it just feels gross. Like we're not trying to do like a rug pull or a cash grab, but if we could use it as a vector to make it more intimate with the community, I think it would be cool, but we haven't unlocked that yet, but same vibes. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, 
people probably don't don't know this yet, but I, I released prints um, and I have a use case for if you bought a print down the road, right? But the print is tangible and I wanted people to buy the print because they like the print, but I'm going to add that value in later and the customers don't even know it yet. What print? What are you talking about? You have photos? So we, we released, Posters? you know, the, uh, we need yeah, so start. they're Let's actually go, mu- <laughs> museum quality prints, right? Like we, we had these made in Tribeca. Uh, of that that run club design the three little yeah. characters yeah. and the background is uh the city. Uh, like all the manhattan streets yeah yeah, yeah. do you want one i of think it'd be good in the office yes, <laughs> i'll, I'll send one your way <laughs> oh my gosh killing me here you're killing me here marcus all right you're pretty big on this so this might be a toss-up but tiktok overrated underrated underrated yeah underrated you know, I, and I, I was a victim or not a victim, but I was a, a, a victim of that mindset of, you know, before I was on the app, I assumed it was just like younger people dancing. Right. Yep. And I think that there are a lot of people of that mindset, but one, the algorithm works. I don't think anyone knows how it works, but um, like you can find so much informational content and like almost transformative content on there. You just have to look for it and interact with the right stuff. Um, it's reminds me very much of like YouTube, how people yep. use YouTube to like learn things. You can learn a lot from, you know, now they have three minute videos, but you know, some of the, sh- the shorter videos that like small, short content, very informative. And that's, that's mainly how I like to like to use it myself. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. I, uh, I thought it was kind of like, uh, again, kind of just these thirst traps constantly. And then mm-hmm. I ended up finding tax advice on there. I learned about it at 179. <laughs> Actually watched your latest thing about how to layer or what t-shirts to wear in the summer and stuff. It, it, it's really, I think it's actually a bigger competitor to YouTube than it is Facebook because it is really, there's some weird niches that people go deep and it's actually like, if that's your thing, it's really interesting and you can learn a ton in that really weird corner of the world. Um, and the algorithm is second to none. It is, it's, it's really dangerous. Yeah, the so algorithm is a bit of a black hole. I'll fall into that thing. And then like 30 minutes, you just wake up. Yeah. Like, I blacked out. What happened? Where did that 30 <laughs> minutes go? Like it can really uh, get you. And then the, the way I think they, synthesize like the music and the captions and there's all these like layered things to it where there's like what they're showing you but then there's the meme or the actual production of what's going on duets like it's very sophisticated cognitively it's it's really interesting Mm -hmm. uh favorite meal and why oh man you gotta do me with this question ah it's it's so tough because i eat the same thing every single day but uh i this is going to sound so terrible. I appreciate a really good salad, like when I'm starving. Right. But I'm not going to say that's my, my favorite meal. Thank um, you. Thank you. I, I do. I do enjoy like a, uh, like a Mac and cheese burger. I haven't yeah. had one in years, but like a really good, well-made Mac and cheese burger, like medium rare. Uh, I'll take, I'll take that. If that's what much, I'm getting much better answer than a salad. Well played, <laughs> well played sir. Um, <laughs> Your favorite fashion brand or designer? Hmm. I'm a, I'm a fan of Bodhi. Um, okay. Emily over there at Bodhi is, uh, I think makes a lot of, you know, really, really good garments. Um, it's tough, right? Um, yeah, I think, I think that that's who I, I like to see how she's running her business. I, mm-hmm. it's almost more of like changed from, I really, really like, you know, fashion label to, I really, you know, respect how somebody, um, runs the business. How the sausage like, is made. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's tough, right? I think almost maybe 90% of it is figuring out how are you going to sell a product, right? Yeah. Cause you, you can yeah. be the, the best designer in the world, but if, if you're the only one that has your products, you know, it's, it's almost tough to make a claim at anything. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, I think, I think it can be almost lost like the art of running the, the business side of a, of a label or of a brand. Yeah. I love that. Side note. I got to go to in Marrakesh, Yves Saint Laurent's uh, old house and it's impeccable. Really cool. Really? If you, to, if you ever go to Morocco, it's in, insane in Marrakesh. He has these incredible gardens and he lived well. He did not. He was not scraping. Yeah. That way. I have heard. I have heard. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very nice. Um, your favorite podcast? 
how I built this guy. Yep. Raz. Super strong. Yeah. Super strong. I, I don't think that there is a better um, educational tool with nuggets of information from actual operators on the internet. I don't, you know, cause like no one there is really trying to sell you on a course or something. It's literally just people talking about their come up from pretty much zero to most of them exit. And for me, like even before I started the business, I would listen, listen to those episodes and I'd always be like plotting, like, Oh, let's remember that for if we ever get to that point. And now it's like, let's listen, kind of see where we would be on par with them as far as size. And like, how did they get up one level, right? How'd they take it to the next level? How can we implement something similar? I totally agree. It's sensational and great production quality. Uh, favorite place yep. to travel to and why? Oh, man. I have not traveled very much, honestly. Oh, it's, no? it's, it's not good. It's not good, right? It's not good. I'm um, so cultured. It's so crazy. Uh, I don't know. I have never left the United States. <laughs> no. Seriously. Yeah, yeah it's, it's bad. It's bad. I actually had Not even Mexico first. or Canada. I had... Yeah. No. Nah. I had somebody tell that's me that's incredible. the biggest red flag. It is a red ever. flag a bit. If I didn't know and you. know what? I'll, a, I'll take my red flag and wave it around. But I, I do plan on traveling. We, we are working with a factory on the handmade uh, sunglasses in Japan. Yeah. And Japan yeah. is like probably number one Amazing. on my places yeah. to travel because I have so much for respect for the way their culture puts attention to detail into everything yeah. they do. Like I, I am fascinated with their manufacturing process, every just everything. And so I think uh, once, you know, travel opens up a bit, like I think still think you have to like quarantine and stuff when you go yeah. there. And yeah, so yeah. I want to make the most of it and visit the factory and stuff. I don't want to be yeah. dealing with, you know, all, all that oh, stuff. So works. yeah, I'll probably, probably go there, but mm-hmm. yeah, I don't really have, I went to I'm tell you right, so Colorado. You. That was pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Philly. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. Saw the Liberty Bell. That's amazing, Marcus. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, all right, man. One last question. You've made it through. Um, if you could have dinner with three people, dead or alive, fictional or non-fictional, who would they be? You're sitting at a four-person table. You're sitting at the head. You get to invite three people. Who's getting the invite for Marcus? Uh, Marcus Aurelius. Um, mainly because his book, his book Meditations, uh, kind of a bit transformative for me. You're still there? Um, yeah, I love it. I, I knew, I knew <laughs> we were just... You Brothers couldn't tell about mother. Like, TikTok? Of course. Of course. <laughs> I love this. Um, shoot, man, some other ones. I'm not uh, I'm not really sure. Probably I, I would say Elon, just yeah. because I, I'd like to pick his brain on on how how he operates the way he does. Like yeah. you know, I, he catches a lot of flack. Um, probably some of it deserved, probably some of it undeserved, but you can't really knock him as an operator. I don't know a whole lot of people that have started multiple billion dollar businesses. Like that's not easy to do. Right. So he's definitely got nuggets of good information. (laughs) He's he's operating Um, on a different level for sure. Yeah. Third man. uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe uh, I'll bring you along so that you can (laughs) talk to both of them with me. (laughs) First time anybody's invited me for that question. Amazing. I've learned so much about you, Marcus. Fantastic. <laughs> Rapid fire. You did it, my friend. Wonderful. Uh, Amazing. I appreciate you having me here, man. Of course. So tell people how they can get more involved in Minted. Where can they follow you on the Tiki Talks, on Twitter? This time is yours. Yeah. So uh, on all social medias, it's uh, I think it's just at Marcus Milioni. Um, and then on Instagram, we have at Minted New York, at Minted Health. And then... Um, that's pretty much it. I also have a, a, a Substack newsletter that I release every week that breaks down what we're working on every single week, kind of like a peer behind the curtains. And that's called the Minted Minutes. But if you find me on social media, my my link in bio thing has all of this, you know, attached Amazing. to it. And then where can you get the pre-workout? Pre-workout is at min, uh, minted.health is the website. Dot .health oh, is the, uh, the end the of the... Top. yeah. Oh, the beautiful. End. The TLD. Fantastic. Yes, it is. Marcus, this is more fun than I could have imagined. I've learned so much about you, and now I'm ready to go get jacked. Now I'm going to get some some minted pre workout and start to get my delayed gratification on because uh, <laughs> there's there's just something to that. When you can get more gratification from saying no to something, it's like that. That's when you know you're on the path of success. That's when I found my most successful. Where it's like I, I get more 
pleasure from adhering to the path that I had laid out than constantly mm. just veering off and, you know, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel kind of thing. So you, you've really brought a lot of focus back to my life. I appreciate it. And thank you for all the gear. This stuff is amazing. If of course. you guys can't get your hands on it, it's, it's incredible. Um, very, very awesome. Go check out mintednewyork.com and then minted.health to go get all the awesomeness. Uh, Marcus, dude, thanks again. If you're ever out in Austin, give me a shout, dude. We'll do some dinners. We'll do it up. We'll get you a big salad or a, a cheeseburger or a mac and cheese burger, <laughs> whatever, whatever proclivity you want. Maybe we'll grab a run together. You can't leave me in the dust though. You gotta, you guys, I've seen your Strava <laughs> screenshots. You're moving. Yeah. <laughs> getting a little faster. You know, You're getting a little quick, bit man. Day. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Hey brother. Thanks again. Thanks so much. If you want to try triple whale, we are try triple whale.com. We are also on the bird app at triple whale. And then we have uh, a bunch of other podcasts, a bunch of other awesomeness. Um, we have a great newsletter called whale mail that goes out every Tuesday, Thursday that you can subscribe to right on our Twitter profile. And that's it. Marcus, thanks so much. Appreciate you making the time. And then thank you for being a light in this world and pushing forward through all these cool ideals, fashion, workouts, just being an awesome human. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. <laughs>